it wasn't even to the Brian and Gary Sutter. It was to Brian and Gary Shooter. <laughs> and uh, to Viking. It was just sent to Viking. It was something to get a letter from the Red Deer Rustlers because at that time, Red Deer Rustlers were the best. They're a very well known team in junior hockey. Bob Benier getting that pass, and it is three to one with a minute and a half remaining in the period. None of the boys had been more than 50 kilometers from home. The day Brian left to try out for the Red Deer team was the first time the brothers were apart. I'll never forget it. It was a sunny August day. And uh, he went away to, to Red Deer. Dad took him in the old 67 Chevy, wasn't it, Ronnie? Ford. Orange truck and red Ford. And uh, I remember Ronnie and I stand at the corner of the house, and I think Brent was with us, and we're all holding hands, and we're crying and bawling, and Mom was crying. And, <laughs> and uh, we thought we were never going to see him again. I still see that truck going down the road. I cried every every day for a month, and then then it stormed at the end of September, and my dad and mother took me down to Red Deer. I remember us driving up there in the old Hafton. I think it was an old red Mercury, and uh, me taking the old brown suitcase out of the back of the truck and and uh, a hockey stick and a hockey bag and. I knew my life was changing when I walked up those steps of the Red Deer Arena. For Brian and his five younger brothers, Red Deer is the first step that will test their desire to play in the NHL. At age 15, Brian Sutter has left the farm to try out for the Red Deer Rustlers. His first step toward the NHL was taken with youthful confidence. I'm sure he told his mother that he was going to make it when he went down and he wouldn't be coming back. And uh, I think he probably packed enough clothes to last him for a month. I, I was cut after about a week and uh, I was afraid to call home. So I didn't really know what to do, quite frankly, because I was on my own. But I remember... Uh, phone and dad and asked him what to do and he said well you better go back in and talk to somebody and then find out what you are going to do and uh, and he said but you're not coming home you, there's no need he more or less said I guess that there's no need you come home you know we took you to I dropped you off there to make that team you better stay and make that team Brian was probably cut because of his skating uh, because he was a rough rough skater and uh, one of the reasons may have been that he was wearing skates that were probably two sizes too big for him. So I remember walking back into the arena and saying I wasn't going home, telling C. Swanson, the coach, and I, I wasn't going back home. And uh, <laughs> I guess I grew up a little bit then, too, and he said, well, fine, be back on the ice tomorrow with your skates. Uh, what I liked about Brian, he was a tall, rangy, tough-looking uh, farm boy, and... Uh, I don't know. There's something in his face or determination that, uh, that I just saw something in him and I said, I got to give him another shot. And uh, as a result of that, I did. And I'm sure glad I did. Growing beyond his limitations, Brian becomes assistant captain of the Rustlers. The doors now open for five younger brothers waiting at home. I think it was just a natural thing. I mean, Brian went on to Red Deer and we just. I don't think it was something where we decided, okay, we're going to go there too. Just we expected to go there. We expected to go somewhere. I think once Brian made it, I think Daryl and Dwayne and all the others decided that if he can make it, I can make it. And I think uh, he opened the door for them, and they, they came in and made sure that they, they were going to keep that door open. The next setter to leave for Red Deer is Dill. Brian and Daryl move up to the Lethbridge Broncos at the much tougher Western Hockey League. 1976. A third brother, Dwayne, also leaves home to play with the Red Deer Rustlers. 
One year later, 15-year-old Brent becomes the fourth Sutter to join the Red Deer Rustlers. He is the youngest Sutter to leave home. I was afraid Mom and Dad would say no, and they didn't want me to go. And I, I remember walking down uh, to the uh, barn with Dad, and Dad asked me uh, what I wanted to do, and I told Dad, uh, um, Dad, I made the hockey team, and I, I would like to go go back with Dwayne. Dwayne's going to be there. and. Uh, I remember Dad just kind of not saying too much and then kind of saying, uh, you know, I don't think you should. And I remember just saying, Dad, I am. Two years later, 1979, Brent becomes captain of the team. And brothers five and six, Rich and Ron, also make the team. The hardest thing was when the twins left, they were the last ones to go. And it wasn't until later on in September when... When the school bus went by one day, <coughs> and it didn't stop, and I realized that it wouldn't be stopping again. I'm sure it was, uh, it was hard for Br her to see Brian go, because he was first, and then it was probably hard to see when the twins left. Me and Dog, she was probably glad to see us, <laughs> and Brent. <laughs> Good riddance. PTV Sports presents, live from the North York Centennial Arena, Playing their first season, Rich, Ron, and brother Brent go to the Junior A Championship to play against North York for the Centennial Cup. The nation and the NHL are watching. The twins, Rich and Ron, are just as determined as their brothers before them. The wrestlers are led by team captain Brent Sutter. Head coach John Chapman begins the most important game of the season, thinking his key player may be sidelined. Uh, Brent Sutter, I know he could hardly walk into the dressing room. We had had him at the hospital in North York, uh, in Toronto, uh, taking treatments on a real bad injury at Charlie Horse, where he was at the point where he couldn't even bend his leg. And uh, uh, he told me that night, he says, I'm going to play. He says, I'll be there. And he was. I think he was the first star of the game. Brent scores two of the three goals to win the Centennial Cup. He is named most valuable player. Well, I don't think they differed that much. I think they all, they would all grind and they would body you and they would fight you and they would do, they'd chop you and they'd hack you and they'd yap at you and they would, they would do whatever it would take to win, whatever they felt, uh, uh, whatever way they felt they could contribute. I don't think they tried to be anything they weren't. And uh, I think that's what makes them pretty unique. Hard work, determination, never giving up, never backing down. Qualities that do not go unnoticed. In Lethbridge, unknown to 19-year-old Brian Sutter, the eyes of the NHL scouts are watching. There's only 18 teams in the league then, and these players kept going. And I started getting a little bit pissed off because here these guys are going in front of me that you would basically did whatever you wanted to do to them and, and, and beat them. And here they're going... Uh, one guy went seventh or eighth, and, uh, and, and it turned out I was the second guy in the second round. I was the 20th guy chosen and by St. Louis. And that was, to that point in time, that was, uh, I, still look, I still look back at it. That was a real proud moment. For the boys who loved hockey, the glory years are about to begin. December 4th, 1976, St. Louis, Missouri. Brian becomes the first Sutter to step onto NHL ice. His determination and skill has paid off. It's a proud moment for the entire Sutter family. In Brian, the Blues find not only another hockey player, but their team captain. Perfect vision. Okay. 
Well, Brian set the tone. Brian was the guy that, that, that he was the first in the league, and then I think the brothers saw him coming along, and they were going to be like Brian. He was a 35-goal scorer, 